Um, hello everybody. Um, I'm Ranjini from Hegel University and I'm going to be talking about uh, the generation of second order topological insulators using a flow drive. And this work was done in collaboration with Professor Diktiman Sen and Dr. Anirban Datta from the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. Um, let me start with a crash course on the BHZ model. Uh, so basically the BHZ model looks something like that, the mathematical of the Hamiltonian. And it basically consists of three terms. The first term is the mass term, which uh, gives the energy gap between the two bands. The second term is the spin independent but orbital dependent nearest neighbor hopping. Um, while the third term is the spin orbit coupling. Uh, there are basically four, uh, two kinds of symmetries in this Hamiltonian, which are of importance here. Uh, one of them is the four-fold rotation symmetry, the C4. And the second one is the time reversal, that is the t going to minus t symmetry. Um, in general, this model is, has a gap spectrum, uh, except for, for some parameter values, which are the lines here. So this is a plot of the delta term here versus the mass. And except some special lines in this parameter space, everywhere the spectrum is gapless. Now, since the spectrum is gapless, we can calculate the turn number and we find that there are areas with, so as we scan along this axis while fixing the delta one, we find that the turn number goes from minus one in this region to uh, minus one in this region to plus one in this region for one of the bands and it's opposite for the other one. So clearly the system has non-trivial topology and this means that it has robust edge modes which can be seen by looking at a narrow ribbon of this uh, material and, it, uh, and we can clearly see that there are edge modes. And in a finite sample, these edge modes go all the way around. Now what happens if we add a term that breaks the symmetries that I talked about? Now, this, uh, so we add a term that looks like that and this basically breaks the symmetries in the following way. It no longer preserves the C4 symmetry, it breaks the time person symmetry, but it preserves the product of these two symmetries. Uh, now with this system, the way to characterize the system topologically speaking is by calculating the mirror winding number, which is by choosing a line, the diagonal in the Bruno zone, that is the kx equal to ky line, because that is what is invariant in this Hamiltonian, and taking the winding number of the wave functions along this line. And if we look at that, we find that the mirror winding number looks like that. So if my mass, uh, mass uh, strength is greater than plus or minus 2, then uh, the mirror winding number is 1, whereas otherwise the system is topologically trivial. And in this region, the final region in this plot, we find that there are corner modes. That is, there are these zero-dimensional corner modes in the two-dimensional system. Okay, so for a 2D system, instead of 1D edge states, we now have zero-dimensional corner states. And instead of the turn number, we use the mirror winding number to characterize uh, the trivial and the non-trivial phases. Which brings us to the question, can these lower dimensional systems, uh, lower dimension, uh, dimensional modes be obtained in a driven system? So if I drive a parameter in the Hamiltonian periodically in time, is it possible to get these corner states even though the corresponding equilibrium model will not have such states? So how do we drive the system? So this is the equilibrium model we start with and we vary this mass term here in the following way. So from 0 to t by 4, we have mass term as m1. From t by 4 to 3t by 4, we have mass m2, which is some, which is somewhat higher than the uh, earlier mass term. And from uh, 3t by 4 to t, we have the mass term again m1. So the time evolution operator for this is given by that. So for the first one-fourth of the cycle, the Hamiltonian is h1, for the next half it is h2, and the last one-fourth it is h1. And we calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this time evolution operator. And using these eigenvectors, we calculate the 
mirror winding number along the diagonal which we talked about earlier and if we do uh, this calculation you may calculate this mirror winding number we find that in some parameter regime the mirror winding number is 1 and for other parameter regime it is 0 and this is how it looks like as a function of the uh, ratio of the two mass amplitudes uh, okay so there are three things which we see here the mirror winding number is calculated modulo 2 and it is either 0 or 1. The second thing that we see here that these transition points, these can be determined analytically and they are determined by studying where the standard evolution operator becomes identity along the diagonal and that those results clearly match. And we do the same driving on the lattice model and we take a finite lattice having 25 cross 25 sides and we vary the uh, mass term as I uh, explained before and we see that uh, exactly in the regions where the mirror winding number was 1 that is non zero we find corner states and there is one corner state per corner. This is clearly consistent so the number of corner modes is consistent with the mirror winding number that we found. And now what we do is we reduce the uh, frequency of the drive. So we make the drive slower and something very interesting happens and we see multiple corner modes. However, we, uh, we saw that the mirror winding number can be calculated only modulo 2. So it can be either 0 or 1. So why is it not correctly counting the corner modes? And is there an invariant that can capture the existence of these multiple corner modes? So in addition to predicting whether or not there is going to be a zero dimensional mode, can there be a topological invariant that can capture these modes? And the answer is yes. Uh, so to do that, we use this uh, time evolution operator along the kx equal to ky diagonal to show that. And we do a parametric plot of these two coefficients here. So take uf and write it in this form and we do a parametric plot of these as a function of k and we find that we clearly get more than one uh, winding number one and we manage to get up to winding number three or four even which I have not shown here and that okay so wherever we get a winding number of greater than one we find that there are the correct number of corner modes as they are predicted by the winding number. So to summarize, we start with a variant of the BHZ model, the Bernoulli Hughes and Zhang model and this variant is what gives rise to a higher order topological insulator. So at equilibrium, instead of one BH modes, there are zero dimensional corner modes. Now, if we go away from equilibrium, so we drive the system and vary the mass term here, we get, we get corner modes again even though the corresponding equilibrium system does not have these zero dimensional modes. Also there can be multiple corner modes as well that is each corner can have more than just one corner mode and this multiple corner modes can be explained by the flow k winding number along the uh, diagonal kx equal to ky in the Brunois zone and this topological invariant can correctly count the number of such corner modes. Uh, so there are some open questions which we are trying to address. So one of them being is it possible to get such modes in other lattices for example. So here we looked at a square lattice on which the BHZ model is valid. Is it possible to get such corner modes in other lattices, say for example a hexagonal lattice? Uh, also, so is it possible that the presence of these higher order terms might affect the conductivity of the systems in any way? So these are some of the questions that we are trying to address. Yeah, thank you.